Hey everybody, Cisco Voice Dude here. Um, this is the third video, or it depends on you know what order you're watching things in. Maybe you could consider this the second video in the series of UCCX scripting. You know, the first video we did, uh, we weren't really intending to make this a series, and we had to do with uh, an advanced technique of passing variables between scripts. And then we went back and did kind of a Hello World video. So this this is kind of the second in order, you know, but the third produced. And uh, I wanted to go through and show you some example, uh, well, in fact, we'll do one specific example IVR here, but I want to show you some of the tools that you'll use in a common IVR, auto tenant, whatever terminology you want to use, and, you know, kind of explore, um, you know, some of the configuration options you have when building a script. So, you know, here's one scenario. You're welcome to play with this and uh, do some other things a little bit different. So again, I like to open my scripts directly from the script repository. We'll go ahead and open the Hello World script that we had previously configured. We do an accept. We do a play prompt, and you'll see we're pointing to the variable prompt welcome, which is a parameter which we then can reference from within CCX as far as what, uh, what file to play. Obviously, if I wanted to, I could just hard code that value in here. It's not necessary to use parameters, but I like to use them anytime the customer might want to make a change on his own without having to necessarily call me out uh, to do it for him. So we're going to do a basic uh, menu option here with some call redirects and uh, you know keep it pretty simple, but show you some of the possibilities. So let's go ahead and keep this the same. We'll do the accept. We'll do the play prompt. Um, this will be our welcome greeting. And then we're going to go into a menu. So I'm going to grab a menu, bring it out here, and I'm going to show you a couple of different things. Whenever you're in a script, you know, you're going to be bouncing around and, and redirecting different uh, behaviors to lots of different places in the script. And you do that you know, just like in, in other languages, and I'll, I'll reference basic for an example here, using a go-to type of behavior. Within CCX, go-to is a go-to a label. So a label can be placed, you know, anywhere. I'll, I'll put it here at the uh, beginning, and we'll call it uh, label play prompt. So if I wanted to, you know, go through the menu and then do a go to label play prompt, I could do that. But I don't like, you know, putting these labels all over the place. So what I'll do. I'll actually go to the object itself, like let's say it's play prompt, I can go to properties, and I can assign the label to the object itself. So label play prompt. So here, if I were to drop through the menu, do a go to label play prompt, it would jump right back up here to the prompt that has the label of label play prompt. Now, I don't really need a label on the play prompt step. I am going to put a label on the menu, but I wanted to show you, you know, that you can use labels on their own, or you can combine them with other objects. So this menu, we'll go ahead and give it a label and we'll call it label main menu. And it's telling me that there's no prompt defined. In fact, uh, I need to, before I do that, I need to actually create a couple variables here. We'll create another prompt variable and we'll call it prompt main menu. We'll make it a parameter again because we want to be able to configure it. So we'll go to the menu We'll give it the label, label, main menu, and we'll go to the prompt, and we'll tell it to use the prompt main menu prompt. We'll go to input. I'm going to set my max retries to zero because I don't want this thing automatically looping. If I leave the max retries value in there, every time I don't enter something, it's going to say, are you still there? And then loop back and play it over again. It's kind of annoying. I would rather do that within my own script code rather than messing with that. So we'll set the max retries to zero. Time out of three. We're going to wait three seconds for digits to be pressed. Now the filter. Filter is where you tie a button to a path of doing something. So if I add a filter, I'm going to add what's called a connection. I'm going to call my connection press one. And as you see, we'll go ahead and press the one here. When I close that, you'll see I get an object here, or an option of press 1. I can then put other code down in here. So like, press 1 could do a go to, and that label doesn't exist anymore. So we'll say go to label main menu. So if I go to the menu, 
and I press 1, I'm going to go back to the beginning of the menu. Now, that's not necessarily real useful, but maybe, you know, press pound to repeat this menu. You know, I could do it with a pound. So we'll move these things around a little bit as we code it here. But anyway, here on the main menu, we'll go back to the filter. So I've got a press 1 option. I've, I'm going to go ahead and do a press 2 option and a press 3 option. And then we'll go ahead and say press pound and that'll work for me. So we'll tie each of these. You know, and the text doesn't really matter. You can make it say sales, marketing, operator, whatever you want. But I'm going to go ahead and tie those to the numbers. And now I've got all these different options. So press press pound will be a press pound to repeat this menu. And actually, since I'm going to do that, no, I like it. I like it that way. We'll leave it like that. We'll do press 1, and press 1 is going to play another prompt. We'll just copy and paste that in there, drag it out to press 1, and we'll change the, the value of what it's going to play here in a minute. Let's see what we want to do here. Let's do a set variable on press 2, just so you see how to use the set option. We'll do an if on press 3, and yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. We like that. So let's define a new variable. We'll make this another prompt, and we'll say prompt press 1, and we'll make it a parameter. So press 1 is going to play prompt press 1, and then it's going to go back. We're going to do another go to, and we'll say play prompt, and then we'll say go to label main menu. So what's going to happen when you press 1, it's going to play the prompt that says you have pressed 1. And then it's going to do a go to label main menu. So it's going to cycle back to here, read you the menu, prompt again, and allow you to press another option. We're going to create a variable here that's just an integer, and we're going to call it um, my integer. And the default value will be 0. Now that's not going to be a parameter because my user won't need to configure this value. I'm just going to be min you know, messing with it here in the script. So if I do a press 2, I'm going to change the properties of the set, set variable my integer, and we're going to say 1. So right now, when the script runs, the integer, my integer, is going to be 0. If you press 2, it's going to set my integer to 1, and then, you know, do whatever I tell it to do. So we'll say, go to label main menu. Sounds like a good thing to do. Press 3, we're going to evaluate this integer. So if condition, let's see here, we're going to actually say if the variable, um, let's see where it's at here, if integer, if integer variable, my integer is greater than zero, if my integer, which will have set when pressing two, if my integer is greater than zero, then true will do a play prompt, and if false, we'll do a play prompt. And I'm going to make a couple more prompts, and we'll call it prompt true and prompt false. And those are both parameters here. So if true, we're going to play the prompt, prompt true. If false, we're going to play the prompt prompt false. Then we're going to do a go to label main menu for both of these. So a lot of times you'd be sending a call somewhere, but I'm just uh, you know just sending things back to the main menu. In fact, let's let's change one of those. We're going to do this. We're going to create a string. We're going to call it operator extension. And we'll go ahead and just put the value in here this time for 1002 as a phone. I'll still make it a parameter so it could be configured by the user. But we'll, we'll put that in the code here. So if true, then we'll play the prompt and go to the main menu. If false, we'll say play prompt and we'll play something like transferring to the operator. And instead of doing the go to label main menu, we will delete that. We're going to do, let's find it here. It is a, I believe it's a call contact step. 
Yes, it is. Call redirect. We will do a call redirect to a destination of operator extension. And that should work. So on the contact, we will do a set contact info to handled. Awesome. So what's going to happen here? If I press 3, we're going to read the integer. If I've already set the integer, then you know, if it's greater than 0, then true. Then we're going to play a prompt prompt true, and we're going to go back to the main menu. If it's not greater than zero, we're going to play the prompt that it's not greater than zero. We're then going to do a call redirect to an operator extension. If I'm successful at doing that redirect, we'll set the contact info to handled, which is then going to terminate the call. And what I really ought to do here, I don't know if it's necessary or not, but I should really do a go to, we'll go to end here, and put a label on it, and we'll call it terminate. So we'll say go to terminate, just to clean and close the script. Again, I don't know if that's necessary or not, but it's something that I do often. Um, and we're going to go busy. We're going to say if busy, then play prompt. We'll put another prompt in here and we'll call it prompt busy parameter. So if it's busy, we're going to play the prompt, prompt busy, and then we'll do a go to main menu. So lots and lots of stuff happening in here. Let me go through it one more time real quick, and then we'll set up the prompts, and we'll give this a whirl. So I'm going to answer. I'm going to play a prompt, prompt welcome. Thank you for calling voice dude or something like that. We'll go to the main menu will play the prompt main menu. Press 1 to play the prompt. Press 1 and return to the menu. Press 2 to set my integer to 1 and return to the main menu. Press 3 if my integer is greater than 0 then play the prompt my integer is greater than 0 and return to the main menu. If the integer is not greater than 0 Play the prompt, the integer is not greater than zero, and set a call redirect to the operator extension. And then you know, we're going to wrap things up and terminate the call. So we'll go ahead and do a tools validate. Script validation succeeded, so this is capable of running. We'll hit save. I'll go back out here to the Hello World application and hit update. When I hit update, you'll see all these new parameters for things that I've, uh, things that I've set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording for just a second. I'm going to record and populate these prompts and then we'll give this script a shot here. So stand by one while we pause this and record the prompts. Alright guys, we're back. We've got our prompts all recorded and we've got our variable set. And actually I went ahead and changed the operator extension to 1000 instead of 1002 because that phone's in a little better location for me. So what you'll see and I've kind of walked through the logic again. We're going to call this auto attendant. We're going to get our welcome prompt. Then we're going to get our main menu prompt. And we're going to navigate some of these options. And actually, so that you can see what's happening, I'm going to do a reactive debug on this script. We'll point to hello world. We'll give it a timeout. And we'll just watch the thing as it bounces around. And I think you'll get a pretty good idea what's going on here. So I'm going to pick up my phone and make the call. And I'm going to just hit play, and we'll watch this go through its natural progression. Thank you for calling the voice, dude. So we're playing the welcome prompt. And we'll go, hang on, something just went wrong here. Let's find out what happened. That was not happy at all. Play prompt main menu. Did I hang up? I think I might have hung up. Let me try that again. Because it works fine when I'm not debugging it. Debug, reactive script. And hello world. Make it long and call. Your operator for Whoops. 4400. Zero, zero. Now we're calling. Hit play. play. Thank you for calling the voice, dude. Welcome to the main menu. To play the press 1 message, press 1. We'll do that. 
you pressed one, Amy Engineer would be proud of you. Welcome to the main menu. To play the press one message, press one. So we're going to press two. To set two the integer to one, press two. To set the integer. Welcome to the main menu. Now that the integer is set, we'll press three. Press the magic eight ball says that it is true. Welcome to the main menu. So as you'll see, we, uh, you know, we set the integer to one, and then we press three. So since it was greater than one, we just went back to the main menu, and then I went ahead and ended that call. I'm going to call this again, but this time I'm going to just press three without setting the integer to one, and it's going to attempt an operator transfer. So we'll call it back. Thank you for calling the voice. Oops, I better show you a reactive debug to make this worthwhile. And yeah, I had accidentally hung up before, so that's why we got the error. No problem there. Press two. Let me call it four four zero zero. Here we go. We'll hit play. Thank you for calling a voice, dude. Welcome to the main menu. Now I'm gonna press three. To play the press one message. This is false. I'm transferring you to the operator. Maybe she can help you. And as you'll hear, the phone behind me is now ringing and we performed an operator transfer. So, real basic stuff here, and uh, you know, I, I, it's not necessarily the most useful IVR in the world, but it shows you some of the most, uh, most frequently used tool steps that you'll use. Now, to build on this, there's a lot of stuff that I'll do different. You know, I'm not usually gonna put an actual call redirect up here in the step. What I'll do is I'll go ahead down here at the bottom, and we'll create a label before terminate and we'll call this properties we'll say label call redirect and I will take the redirect step and I'll bring it down here and I will grab my set variable and right here we'll say set the variable operator extension or you could call it redirect extension really because it's not necessarily going to the operator to 1000 so I'll set operator extension is 1000 and then I'll do it go to redirect so instead of having to code redirect every single place that I use it I will simply set the destination I want to send it to and then call redirect and let redirect read the value of the variable so you know operator extension again isn't the best description we could call it redirect extension but uh, you know I could send people you know 10 15 places from one IVR I certainly don't want to duplicate all that code so this is you know think of this as a subroutine type of behavior and it'll work exactly the same so we'll go ahead and go through here and dial it again and do a debug reactive script we'll pick hello world set the timer high in fact I'll go hit update here because I made a change and dial it back and we'll watch this go through and you'll see us go and hit that redirect step welcome to the main menu I'm gonna press three this is false I'm transferring you to the operator maybe she can help you so I set the operator extension it went to call redirect, it's doing the redirect, it's ringing the phone, so it's successfully handled that, oops, right here, successfully handled that, and it went down to terminate and is ended. So, that is a successful execution of the script, and uh, it should give you an idea of how to use some of the basic tools, how to use the labels and the menu and the play prompts, and how to deal with call redirects, and how to deal with ifs. Again, Really basic example, we can go through more of these later, but uh, that should get you cooking on a really, really simple, you know, press one to go here, press two to go somewhere else type of auto attendant. So I hope this has been useful, and uh, expect more videos from me on UCCX scripting, but for now, we'll see you later. Voice Dude out.